Mega Mechatronics. And welcome back to Mega Mechatronics. We are continuing our Tuning 101 series with Part 5. So let's get into this. We're going to be looking at Spark Tuning. When we're talking about Spark Tuning, we really mean Ignition Advance. So we have the power to increase our torque and horsepower given different changes to your engine we're using higher octane fuel or you made modifications to the engine you put a put a turbocharger on it you're going to need to optimize the spark tables to because you're just going to be leaving a bunch of power on the table if you don't do this or you're going to damage your engine we can also increase our economy again using higher octane fuels and things like that and we also have the power to destroy your engine so you have to be careful here you can't go nuts and you should really have some way of detecting knock. Using OEM uh, ECUs, the knock sensors are great because they will provide you with real-time knock retardation where it's going to pull timing while you're in that high-load scenario or in that high-load condition. So when you're advancing uh, your timing and, and tuning, just go two degrees at a time. You don't want to overdo this. You don't want to do five or six degrees of advance. And that's just dangerous. So you should really just take baby steps when you're tuning um, Spark. So this is where you're going to make your engine or you're going to break your engine. So you have to be very careful and just, and just make sure you watch your detonation and your knock. And then when you're happy with your tune... We're going to back off the timing two or three degrees to give you some extra safety. So to improve the fuel economy, we're going to step up the uh, octane rating. I assume if from the factory they require you to put in 93 octane, there might not be a lot of gains here. But, but for other vehicles tuned for 87, we can try to increase our efficiency. So we would advance the timing in the low load areas. So you're going to find out in cruise on the freeway or cruising in the city, uh, we'll get an idea of where the engine is at as far as in the spark table. And then we're going to add a little bit of timing. And you may see some increases in, in miles per gallon. However, the downside of going to a high octane fuel is the increased cost. So... Uh, let's assume we're using summer blends of fuel and we should balance off that cost. So yes, you did pay more per gallon, but you're using less gallons because your efficiency is increased. So the real benefit is going to be in wide open throttle with the high octane fuels. So again, we want to try to increase the octane. You can even go to E85, which is over 100 octane or go to an injection system to inject alcohol or methanol to also increase your timing and, and reduce your charge temperature so you can add more timing. So we're gonna be focusing on advancing the timing in the high load areas. And when I say max safe torque, you're really gonna need a dyno to uh, figure out where this is. The uh, because you're going to continually be advancing the timing, and then at some point you're not going to be gaining power. So then you know at that point you need to back off the timing to where it just starts dropping off so that you know it's safe. And that could be uh, three or four degrees before you start getting knock. So the knock threshold isn't always going to be where you're going to have the most torque or the safest torque. So with forced induction, you actually may see a dip at the lower RPMs. And that's what I've experienced and, and seen other people have. So at low RPM, let's say you start um, at 2,500 RPM, you go into wide open throttle, the timing will increase. And then uh, near max torque at the low RPM, let's say at, I don't know, 3,200 RPM, we're going to decrease the timing. It'll dip down between 3,200 RPM and 3,600 RPM, and then it's gonna start increasing again as the RPM, uh, as the RPMs increase. And you can't just take a naturally aspirated timing table and apply that to a forced induction engine. 
where let's say you took a naturally aspirated engine and put a turbocharger or supercharger on it, you can't just use the same timing table. And there may not even be that dip in advance. And in addition, the max timing at max RPM will be significantly lower, almost half of that of a naturally aspirated engine uh, for forced induction. So the spark tuning cycle, and again, knock is key. you got to make sure you keep an eye on it or you're listening for it. And we have to assume um, that the non-wide open throttle and wide open throttle fueling has already been completed. So you already went through the non-wide open throttle tuning cycle and got your, your long-term field trims good. Um, and then you went into wide open throttle. Um, and when you did your wide open throttle tuning, you backed off the timing in the, in the high load areas. And then you got your wide open throttle fueling completed. Um, and then actually you're going to go back to wide open throttle fueling after we get our timing. So here's our tuning cycle. So we want to record the input. So we want to record the knock retard, the total knock retard that is applied. So for example, so we need to make sure we're recording that and we're also listening for knock. So if you don't have the table set up, you're listening for it and then you have to be aware of what RPM you're at. And since we're under high load, you can assume where that is in the knock, in the spark advance, main spark advance calibration table. So then we'll analyze the results. So we'll look at the total knock retard table. And also again, you're going to, figure out, well, I started knocking at 4,200 RPM, but I let off the throttle. So you're going to go on that table at, at the near, you know, between 4,000 and 4,400 and, uh, pull out some timing there and then do a, a wide open throttle, go through the cycle again. And again, so we'll calibrate the outputs and with the, using a table, like a histogram, uh, it's really easy. You can select all the cells and then apply that to the engine, the ECU's calibration table right from there, subtracting exactly the amount of retard that was applied. So once your spark tuning cycle is complete at, in wide open throttle, you want to remove uh, two to three degrees of advance across the whole wide open throttle zone just for engine safety. Because essentially you tuned wide open throttle to the threshold of not. But that's not always where the max power is, or there is no benefit of running it so close to the, to the knock threshold. It's much safer and more responsible to pull timing back from there and lose, you know, 1% power, but you gain 50% safety, um, in a sense. Okay, now we are looking at a logged table. This is a logged histogram, and we're looking at total spark advance. This is not retard. So we'll switch over to total knock retard. You can see these are populated with zeros because zero knock retard was applied to the engine, but you can see how where it's gathering the data, so you may have numbers in there. So what you can do is actually copy this whole table because it's scaled exactly the same as a calibration table. So let's open that up. We'll go to our high octane and then we'll just select everything and apply that to it. So we'll pay special. So it'll subtract knock retard from the corresponding cells automatically. That's great. So just save it and you're off. Okay. Now we're moving into fuel injector calibrations. So step one is to make life easier is we want to calibrate the non-wide open throttle fueling using the older injectors. So we need to calibrate, um, make sure that our fueling is good using the old injectors. And then we're going to install the new injectors and adjust the static injector flow rate versus pressure table to match the new injector ratings. And this is the spec that you bought your injectors with. So. 60 pounds uh, per hour at 43.5 PSI as a standard rating. And then from that, we can interpolate the table and get a good estimate. And then after that, things aren't going to be right. So we're going to have to adjust the injector offset table to really calibrate the fueling. So we calibrate it with the old injectors. The fueling was great. And then we put in the new injectors and adjusted the static injector flow rate table. 
But we're not done yet because you're, you're probably not going to get good fueling data. Your, pro your trims are going to be off. So in step three is where we're going to try to correct the, the fueling and get it as close as possible before we have to start calibrating the uh, VE table or the, the mass airflow tables. So we have uh, three things here. We have our fuel calibration, our static flow rate, and our injector offset. Our fuel calibration was good because we calibrated it with the old injectors. And now, and the static flow rate is known because when you purchased your injectors, they provided you with at least one data point where you can interpolate across the board. If you get the whole flow table, that's, that's awesome. Use it. And then the only really unknown is the injector offset. And unless you have friends who work for the company that develops the fuel injectors, you may not be able to get this information. So that's why we're going to use fueling, fuel trims to get it close. So let's cover this fuel injector offset. What the heck is that? So let's look at this graph here on the vertical axis. We have injector flow rate in pounds per hour. And across the bottom, we have time, which would be scaled to the injector pulse width. So here is the ideal flow. This is the requested flow so the engine runs um, properly. And this is what the computer is doing. It's saying this is the flow to get our air fuel ratio. But the problem is injectors aren't perfect, uh, especially at the opening areas. And this, this would be an uncompensated for offset. It's uncompensated fueling. So when the computer says, all right, I need fuel, there's a delay in time and then it starts providing the fuel. So what we want to do is compensate for that offset right here and move that back. So the computer actually fires the injector maybe a little bit earlier uh, so that the majority of the area, so that it's, it's following that requested flow. So we want to go through our tuning cycle. Uh, with the fuel injector offset. So what we would expect is a fueling error across the board at all points. So at low RPM, low load, cruise, wide open throttle, you'll probably see a blanket percentage um, that the fueling is off. And then you're going to kind of use that to make your adjustments to the fuel injector offset calibration table. So we'll take that average error and apply that percentage error to all the uh, injector offset values. So let's hope that you're running a little rich. So now we're going to be leaning it out. And again, you want to take baby steps to, to lean, lean it out. So you'll pull in, um, So if you're running too lean, you'll have positive percentages of error. And that's going to add more to the injector offset table. Or if you're running way too rich, you need to pull, you're going to have negative errors. So you apply those negative errors to the offset calibrations and you'll see the, the, um, the values in the offset table go down, which will remove some fuel. So if the fuel injector offset calibration is not achievable or you can't get it to work, things aren't working out or it's not consistent across the board, the fueling error is not consistent across the board, you're just going to have to go back and do your VE or mass airflow tuning cycles um, and kind of trick the ECU to make that happen. But this could, this is going to affect your fuel economy and range estimates. So those will be misleading after you do this. So looking at the static flow rate table, it's a flow rate versus pressure table. And we will input the fuel flow rates at every pressure. And again, the flow rate should be provided when you buy a 60 pound injector or 42 pound injector. It's typically at 43.5 PSI. So we can use that as a data point. And we, there's a bunch of online flow conversion calculators where you input the, this, uh, 60 pounds at 43 PSI. And at a new PSI, it'll give you that new flow rate. Or you can do it by hand using this calculation. So if we have our new pressure is 50 PSI 
and the base pressure, the old pressure is 43.5. So we do 50 divided by 43.5, square root of that, multiply that by the base flow rate or the old flow rate, and then that's going to equal our new flow rate, which you'll input into the table at 50 PSI. And we can apply this to all the cells. So what I did was I picked the high cell and got the new flow rate there, or the highest pressure, got the new flow rate there. I got, this is obviously the nominal pressure, and then the lowest pressure, and applied the new flow rate there. And then I interpolated between those, so it filled us, fills in the blank in between those. All right, so let's review the this uh, the new injectors. So I have this vehicle here. Uh, let's go to fuel and then the flow rate versus pressure. So you see a lot of these here, multipliers and things. Don't touch those. What we want to focus on is the table that looks like this. So we have a pressure up here. This happens to be in KPA and then a flow rate down here. So I had the, this has 42 pound injectors installed, green giants. Um, so at 43.5 PSI, we should have the 42 pounds. So if we bring up our calculator here, um, at, uh, let's see, 43.5 divided by 14.7 equals that, um, uh, times 101. So at about 300, we should be at the, um, we should have 42 pounds. So you can see we're actually right in between those. So the average of those should be 42 and we're actually really close to it. So when I said I picked, so that's the first point you're going to put in here. So uh, for an example, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these and put zeros in there. Um, well, I'll undo that and we'll bring up our, our graph here so you can see. So we'll go full screen. So I'm going to do that again. So all these cells are selected. Let's pretend this is our base point right here, 308 at 43 pounds. So I just ruined this, right? We'll do that again here. Okay, so we have three points in this table. We have this 27, so you can go in there and calculate. Um, with the online conversion, we'll convert what's the flow rate estimate down here, and then at the max of flow rate estimate from there. So with the HB tuners, I'm able to select that whole range, and then we'll hit the interpolate between the horizontal. And then over here, again, we will interpolate between the horizontal, between the minimum and that nominal base flow. And there we go. Okay, so now let's look at the um, offset table. So again, ignore that stuff. And then in, in this particular ECU with HP tuners, it's pointed out pretty clearly the offset. So we want to find the offset versus pressure. And some vehicles will have ignition voltage as well. So we'll open up this. And you can see it's a, uh, we have a pressure here and a voltage here. And then here's our offset values in here. I believe these are in uh, milliseconds, possibly. Let's go back here and see. Yeah, so milliseconds. So let's say across the board, you, in, you installed the new injectors, you updated the static flow rate table, but we, have, we are 20% too rich across the board. So what we want to do is we're going to start off by removing 20% from this offset table. Um, since we're going towards the, the leaning, we're probably, we're not going to do that. So instead of taking the full 15, um, 20%, let's take 15 or 10% out. So let's do 0.9. So we'll take out 10%. So we're going to do select all the cells, do 90% or 0.9, multiply that. And we just removed a bunch of offset. And now we're going to do our tuning cycle and uh, continually tweaking this. And that, that's what we got for injector offset.